Well, let me tell you something, brother. Snort, snort, snort. Tell you, drip, snort, snort. I got the drip. Wow, everybody. I'm Phil, and I'm back with an official episode of DSP Tries It, the first apparently in a very long time. I haven't done this show in a long time because, honestly, I just don't really do tastings or testing of products anymore. Um, things change over time, right? And remember, this was a long-standing series that I did for many, many years, and people always enjoyed when, usually on a weekly basis, I would try a new fast food item or a snack or whatever it may be, and it was a regular thing and kind of just faded into obscurity. But tonight, I am here, and I am bringing this series out of retirement for a very special reason. Because tonight, I am going to try a product from another YouTuber. And of course, as you know, this is the kiss of death. How dare you try a product from another beloved YouTuber? How could you, right? Here's the thing. I don't know what to expect, all right? A lot of people have said a lot of things, but for me, I'm just gonna tell you my personal experience around this product, and then we're gonna actually taste it live and see if it's good, and if it's good, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you it's good. If it's not good, I'm going to tell you what it actually tastes like, okay? Today, we are going to be tasting Mr. Beast candy bars. Two different flavors. On here, we've got the standard flavor. It's just called Mr. Beast Bar Milk Chocolate. The other one is called Mr. Beast Bar Crunch. One is just pure milk chocolate, and one is uh, has those little rice pieces in it. Okay. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly which one is good or not, if either of them are good. I don't even know, like, what what is the, the appeal of this. Is this Feastables? And I don't even know if that's, like, the name of the real company that makes it. And all they did is they slapped Mr. Beast's name on there as, like, a name recognition. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, when I go to the store, I don't care whose name's on the bar, you know. Uh, it says, milk chocolate made with... I can't even read it. Grass-fed milk. So I care, apparently, what they fed the cow whose udders they squeezed to create the milk that they put into the milk chocolate. I'm supposed to care about this. That's important, apparently. Um, only five ingredients. For the record, this bar is tiny. It's 1.24 ounces or 35 grams. A standard candy bar is, no exaggeration, at least two times as big as this bar. It's actually like, I would consider this a snack size. I wouldn't consider this a full-size bar. But this is what they sell at the store, like at the checkout line. And the normal price for a Mr. Beast small snack size bar is $1.99. $2 for this snack size candy bar when you could get a big Nestle Crunch or a big Snicker bar or whatever for actually cheaper than that, okay? So I'm just telling you comparison-wise, you know, why people would look at this and say, is this a reason I want this or not? When I go to the store and I'm getting a candy bar, you know, I want a reason to get it. Is it giant? I'll get the giant one, right? Is it on sale? So these Mr. Beast bars are very expensive, $20 for a tiny little bar. And when I look at it, it says, more noms, more prizes, more beast. Scan here. And it has one of those QR codes. I don't know what any of that's supposed to mean. It doesn't mean anything to me. So ingredients, right? They're claiming only five ingredients. Let's take a look at the ingredients. So this is the milk chocolate bar. Cane sugar. Organic cocoa butter, organic chocolate liqueur, organic milk, and organic vanilla powder. Now, just for the record, if you were to ask a scientist, is there a reason why you should eat organic foods over standard foods, they would tell you no. 
Organic foods are myth. It's a it's a wives' tale that organic foods are better than non-organic foods. But it's such a big myth that it's an entire bajillion dollar industry. Like you go to any grocery store now, you'll find a whole organic section, even though there's literally no scientific evidence that organic ingredients are better for you than non-organic, they still sell them for a premium price. You understand? So to tell me it's a five ingredient organic chocolate bar and because of that you're paying $2 for this tiny bar as opposed to a ginormous normal chocolate bar that would be less than $2, it, it means nothing to me, okay? I, I'm a person who I, I do live my life based on like logic and facts rather than nonsense. And so, you know, I would never go to the grocery store and, and shop organic over non-organic unless I, if they had something organic, they didn't have it in non-organic, I would get it. But I would never pay extra for organic. It's stupid. There's literally no evidence of any of it. it, it again, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a conspiracy. And people are that dumb that they buy into that when there's no evidence of anything that it's better, okay? So all that being said, okay? That's the, the standard milk chocolate bar. The crunch bar says six ingredients. I'm going to assume it's the same five ingredients and then it's going to be rice, correct? So, cane sugar, yep, organic cocoa butter, organic chocolate liqueur, organic milk, puffed rice, and organic vanilla powder. It's exactly the same. So the only difference between these two is the rice versus the non-rice, correct? Okay. Fair enough. So, looking at the two, and for the record, I did not pay $2 for these. I want to make that clear. I would never pay $2 for a tiny candy bar of any level. These were on extreme clearance at my local grocery store, all right, for $0.60 cents each. So, they're supposed to be $1.99, but they were reselling them for $0.60, cents, less than one-third of the value of the bar because no one bought them. Like, there's this stock in my grocery store of these all over the place. At Halloween, they were trying to sell bags of these for Halloween candy for kids for $22 a pop when the competitors were selling for 7 and no one bought them. They literally just sat there on the shelf and no one bought them at all. It was untouched. So all this inventory just sitting around taking up space and no one's buying it. So they're trying to liquidate it for extreme clearance prices. Okay? <clears throat> so, I'm going to taste it. And the thing is, just for... for very, very transparency purposes here. I love chocolate. I'm a chocoholic. Chocolate is my number one favorite dessert of any kind. If you were to ask me, what's your favorite candy? Chocolate. What's your favorite cake? Chocolate. What's your favorite ice cream? Chocolate. Brownies. Chocolate. Everything chocolate. I love chocolate. And I have a hard time eating, stopping myself from eating chocolate. Okay? So I love chocolate. I'm curious if I would not like this. Because, again, I like chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Um... But at the same time, I'm going to rate it fairly. This is supposed to be made of all these organic ingredients, and maybe that's why it's $2 for this tiny bar, you know? But th the organic ingredients don't matter. They don't make anything taste better. They're not better for you. It's all a myth. So if you're going to be a YouTuber and you're going to make a unique product, do you go with a bunch of myths and mark up your product to make a massive profit? I guess if your name's Mr. Beast, yes, that's what you do, okay? So, okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm being asked, is there an expiration date on the bar? July 2024. And then this one is April 2024. So they're still good. They have not expired as of now. Okay? So, here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. We're gonna see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. Don't shoot the messenger. This is my honest review. I have the right to review it however I want. Okay? So here we go. Let's open the first bar. Mr. Beast Barred Milk Chocolate made with organic... No, made with grass-fed milk. Literally says it on the front. Okay. So what does it look like? On the very top of the bar is a share and it has a small snap off piece. And at the very bottom, it's a giant chunk that says devour at the bottom. So basically, I, guess, I know it's supposed to be a joke, but that's kind of mean spirited. 
share, give you this tiny piece while I keep the giant portion at the bottom. Wow, that's a really fun, positive-spirited candy bar, isn't it? Especially because you have to understand that someone like Mr. Beast appeals to kids. And probably kids are the vast majority of people who watch this stuff on YouTube. And you're teaching the kid, if you're going to share, only share this tiny top portion with everyone else and keep the rest for yourself. It's a good moral lesson to teach to people, right? I'm sure he came up with that idea, too. So, <clears throat> I had no idea that was in there, by the way. This is completely on the fly. I had no idea. All right? So, let's go ahead and let's snap this off. Because the thing is, if Mr. Beast actually had this candy bar, he'd devour this portion. And he'd hand me this. So, this is what I'm allowed to eat of his candy bar. Correct? Okay. So let's go ahead. Smell. It smells pretty sweet. Looks pretty standard. Like it looks like standard milk chocolate to me. It doesn't look any different. It doesn't look terrible. It has a, a softness to it, meaning it's not that dry ass chocolate, like the knockoff chocolate that's terrible. So it's not dry ass chocolate. That's good. It looks moist. All right. I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a, a bite off the end here. Let's see here. It's very sweet for milk chocolate. It's like really sweet. Why is it so sweet? Like, so, so, to give you some comparison, my wife and I bought a bag of those nuggets of Hershey's chocolate around Christmas time. We still have some of it. So it's like the nuggets are like milk chocolate, milk chocolate with almonds, milk chocolate with toffee. And so I've had milk chocolate recently and this tastes way more sweet to me than Hershey's milk chocolate. Like, it tastes like there's way more sugar in it for some reason. I have no idea if that's because it's grass-fed milk, but it does taste different, okay? Okay, so it's not bad, but it's just sweeter than I expect for milk chocolate. It's a good consistency. It's smooth. It melts in your mouth like you want milk chocolate to do. It's not the knockoff shit, for sure. But it does have this overpowering note of sugar or sweetness. Maybe because it's made of pure cane sugar. And I don't know if I like that. I actually think it may be a little too sweet for me. Like, when I think chocolate, I think I want to taste, like, the cocoa, and I want to taste the richness. And all I'm really getting out of this, I'm getting a lot of sweet sugar taste, and that's really it. I don't really get a lot of chocolate flavor out of it. It almost tastes more like a confection than a chocolate bar. You see what I'm saying? And that's not a good thing. It's Why is it so sweet? What's weird about it is only five ingredients then what, what ingredients did you choose that you made it so sweet, right? I'm a little confused, all right? I'm going to try the other one. This is the Crunch Bar, okay? Let's snap off the share piece of the Crunch Bar. Here's the thing. I love Nestle Crunch. I love anything that has the crunchy things in it. I, I think it's delicious. Nestle Crunch is one of my favorite candy bars of all time. So immediately opening it, I can tell you it looks like Nestle Crunch. Look at that. Does that look like the bottom of a Nestle Crunch bar? It looks exactly like it, right? 100% looks almost identical. So here we are. It's the same exact top. The share and the devour. So again, the mean-spirited, bad lesson for your kids. Only share this tiny part at the top. Keep it all for yourself. Great idea, right? Mr. Philanthropist. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now, smells the same. They smell identical. This is supposed to have these Rice Krispies in it. So let's see what this tastes like.
I'm gonna take. I'm gonna eat the other half of it before I comment. One thing I should make. I should show you, because I want to show you this. Do you notice something about that bar? Take a look at the rice. Where's the rice? Only at the direct bottom. You see that, right? When you eat a Nestle Crunch bar, the rice is completely throughout. In the Beast Crunch bar, the rice is only at the very bottom. There's literally no rice throughout the whole top of the chocolate. It's only in the bottom. See that? Only one thin layer of rice at the bottom. That's it. Okay? I'm, I want to be fair. I'm going to take a third bite of the, the rice chocolate bar, and I'm going to tell you why after I chew it and taste it. I want to take a third bite, okay? So now I'm biting into the big chunk. And again, look. There's only rice at the bottom. You see that, right? Okay. Okay. So you might ask, well, Phil, why did you buy? Why did you bite a big third bite out of the the, the crunch chocolate bar? Because I don't taste the rice at all. This tiny thin layer of rice they put at the bottom is not enough to taste the rice in it at all. It this bar tastes exactly the same as the pure milk chocolate bar. There's no difference in flavor. They're exactly the same bar. You can't have that little rice in there in a bite and expect that the consumer is going to taste it. There's not enough in there. I take one bite and I hit a crunch, and the second bite, there's no crunch. It's done. So I can't taste it. With Nestle Crunch, you absolutely can taste the rice in each bite. It has this unique sweet vanilla flavor to it that complements the chocolate. Here, these bars are absolutely identical to me. I see no difference between the two at all. You might as well buy the same one twice because it doesn't matter. Okay? So, right off the bat, the Crunch Bar, that's a no-go for me. I did, that's terrible. Nestle Crunch is far better than the Mr. Beach Crunch Bar. Okay? Now, again, so what do I think overall? I'll tell you. Um, basically, the chocolate's too sweet. It's creamy. That's good. Okay? It melts in your mouth. That's good. It's not chalky. Like, real knockoff chocolate is the one that's dusty and chalky and it's gross. It's definitely not that. He used good ingredients. I can't say anything negative about the selection of ingredients. It sounds like he used good ingredients. The problem is the balance is off. This bar is way too sweet. Even for milk chocolate, this bar is too sweet for me. It's like a real strong confection taste almost rather than a chocolate bar. I would go buy Hershey's, I would go buy Nestle's, I would buy any other company before I would buy a Mr. Beast bar because this is too sweet. And that's a shame because it's way more expensive than their competitor. Again, this tiny bar is $2 unless it's on extreme clearance because no one bought it and you could get it for 60 cents. This bar is $2. You could buy a giant Nestle's Crunch, a giant Hershey bar for $2. This is way overpriced. And again, you might argue, well, it's only five ingredients and they're all organic. I don't care. Number one, when you're eating chocolate, you're not eating it for your health, genius. You're not eating chocolate to get healthy. This is your splurge. This is your comfort food. This is your dessert. You don't need it to be healthy. That's stupid. Anyone who says otherwise is a fucking moron. You don't need organic ingredients in your chocolate bar. You're a dunce. Okay? That's not your selling point for your cheat food. That's asinine. Okay? Anyone, again, one logic check, and already you've already disproved the fact that anyone would want organics in their chocolate bar. All right? And then on top of that, the fact that you, or you're, you're pushing this organics conspiracy, this organics 
pseudoscience on people to justify the fact that your bar costs far more than the competitors makes no sense whatsoever. And then even your joke, shareable piece is a tiny piece, is a bad moral to teach kids, right? The only thing I will say that's positive about this is very simple. It's not a shitty chocolate bar. It didn't fall apart. It didn't melt. It wasn't chalky. It wasn't dry. It just doesn't taste good. It tastes like pure sugar. That's not what you go for in chocolate. It's too expensive. The rice distribution was terrible. I could have, have a checklist of bad versus one good point. This bar is crap. What a shocker that a YouTuber, all right, who makes the kind of content that he does <laughs> and dabbles in so many businesses, his ghost kitchen burger business that went out of business, now his chocolate business, that it's inferior. I'm so surprised, right? I, I mean, just never would have expected that the overpriced Mr. Beast candy that the parents scoffed at at Halloween was actually also not very good tasting, right? Okay, so Mr. Beast standard chocolate bar. I'm going to give it a one and a half star out of five. Way overpriced, too sweet, not good. The Mr. Beast Crunch Bar, I'm going to give a one star out of five because it doesn't taste like a crunch bar because I don't taste any rice in it. It's terrible. Okay? Don't buy this shit. Really. Do not buy this trash. Do not spend money on this crap. If you want to waste your time watching bad YouTube videos, I can't stand it. I, I can't help you. But don't waste your money on this. The competitors know what they're doing. Don't buy it because someone's name's on it. By the way, he didn't make it. It says right on it, it's a company called Feastables. And then happens to have Mr. Beast's name on there. He didn't make the chocolate bar. Don't waste your money on this crap. Go support companies that know what they're doing, have been doing it for hundreds of years, and will continue to make quality products. Stop supporting the flash-in-the-pan popular crap from today. All right? Seriously. Don't waste your time. It's bad. And that's me being honest. As a chocoholic, I have, Nes I have uh, excuse me, Hershey chocolate in the kitchen. If I want chocolate, I will not I'm literally going to throw this out, and I'm going to go eat Hershey chocolate off of my countertop. Okay, I am, because it's way better. <laughs> There's no point in wasting time on this crap, okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching the return of DSP Tries It, coming out of retirement for this one, to review something that I found hilarious. And again, I'm not trying to start crap. I'm being honest. All right? Sadly, this is not good. It's a shame, because it would have been great if it was something good, but once again, overpriced tie in with a YouTuber on purpose to make profits. It's not good. It's crap product. Skip it. Unless you want ultra sugar rush confections in your mouth. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Maybe in another three to four years hiatus. Peace out, everyone. Be safe. I got the drip going. 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 It's like a faucet that's dripping can't make it stop so what do you want me to do have a have a mute button that every second i'm tapping the mute button just in case I, i'm gonna have to clear like this is what i mean these, these dumb kids this is what it is it's dumb kids